Good evening, Frank Macaluso here from Garageaholic. Welcome to another edition of the E36 N54 Twin Turbo Swap right behind me, where we're today we will be installing the radiator bracketry, including the front brace. Now the radiator is actually four radiators in one big subcomponent. It includes the cooling radiator, the power steering, the air conditioning condenser, and the forced air intercooler. We will be upgrading the intercooler at the same time, which has a little bit longer front end clearance that we need to make, but the front E36 M3 bumper has a big fish mouth in front, so we should be easily able to handle that. So today we will be going from this configuration to this. How will I do it? Stand by and find out how, I might just tell you. This is the existing radiator configuration. We have our power steering cooler, we have our forced air intercooler, we have our air conditioning condenser, and of course, the engine coolant. We're gonna be sticking with all stock components except the intercooler, we're gonna upgrade that. This is the back, that, this is the side that faces the engine, and as you can tell, I do need to clean up some of the, uh, the fins on the radiator, but that's an easy one. The intercooler will be upgraded. It will have a much longer front end, which will peek into the front uh, bumper a little bit, but we should have enough clearance for that. So this should be uh, relatively simple. We're just going to end up, uh, you know, taking on the, uh, the stock uh, E36 um, radiator mounts and just adapting it to this radiator core. So, all right, so I've assessed the situation and here's where I think we are. What I'm going to do is I'm going to end up widening, widening these frame rails. Instead of creating brand new frame rails, I'm just going to end up widening in this certain location in order to meet the dimension of the width of this radiator subset, which is about 28 and a half, uh, 28 and a half inches. So if I just cut a little bit on either side, it shouldn't interfere with the shock and where it mounts. Um, and it should still get me the room that I need and the width that I need without having to change uh, most, most of any of the uh, radiator bracketry. Unfortunately, I will have to modify this bracket up top um, because the radiator was going to end up popping up through the mi middle of this, so this is probably going to end up getting cut and hinged out. But at least the hood, the hood location pins will be uh, the same, and that's really the important thing is that the hood lines up. So um, this this will end up getting changed um, to accommodate the the taller and wider radiator. But I think that what I'm going to do is just widen the radiator, <clears throat> widen the frame rails. I think that's the easiest. Um, widen it and then beef it up. So. Let's get to it. What's up guys? Hey, you remember when I said a few uh, episodes ago that this project was anything but standard? The N54 is a little bit more challenging and requires some more customization. It is definitely far from standard. This is not plug and play. Um, this is not use X bracket or Y bracket. Or yeah, well this uh, two part radiator install series will not only validate it, it will magnify it. loosely mounted here and the problem is that even though that I've widened the frame rails themselves and I can always beef it up with more weld and metal and all that it's the shocks the diameter of the shocks from the driver's side to the passenger side is still less than 28 and a half inches that's going to be a big problem for me being able to fit the radiator in there. So I have to figure out how to widen the distance between those two shocks um, on the back side of the radiator bracket. And I think I know how to do it. So I'm just going to widen each, each one of those just a bit. It's going to be uh, each of those studs from the bumper uh, shock itself is going to be on the wide end, on the wide end of these holes. So we're basically looking at just on the outer tolerance to get me that extra inch, which is a half an inch on each side that I need in order to get that radiator to fit in. And the way that it's going to install is from the top down. That's how the radiator will go in and out of the, of the car just like any other. So it'll be serviceable as well. Now, don't be scared. All I'm doing is cutting them and I'm gonna shift them over and I'm gonna beef them up. I'm only shifting them over a half an inch so it's gonna share a lot of the same similar 
structure and I will beef it up with some gusseting, but it will give me the one inch that I need and still honor the, uh, the mounting locations for the bumper. So what I've done with this bumper bracket here, this guy right over here, is I've drilled slots in the front so that the bumper shock mount to it, it can move left and right because I needed to widen both of the shocks in order to fit the radiator. So now that I've widened it, both of those bumper brackets, that, uh, bumper shocks that are mounted to the main bumper bracket are off. So I slotted them, they're extended, and now I have to make sure that the bumper bracket itself sits, sits evenly. It's 26 inches wide is the frame rail distance that I'm going for, so half of that is 13. If I put a square right up here, and I'm just going to measure it, I'm, if I'm plus or minus a quarter inch, I'm fine. And, I'm, and I match it up with my mark that I made, it's pretty straight. So this bumper is set where it's going to be. I'm going to then start to weld up these nuts right along the edge. Well, the TIG welds didn't come out exactly as how I had planned, but uh, you know, I did the best I could with them and it's strong enough to hold the bumper in place. Um, so uh, take a look here. I did a little bit of refinishing here. But not the best work in the world, but uh, it was what I could do with what I have. So I think I'm going to try to brace it up a little bit more, maybe from the backside, and that's going to help add a little bit more strength as well. To get some welds in on the backside too to give it a little bit more strength. So in terms of cutting the frame rail, there's not much left I need to do before I start welding the bracketry up to beef it up. But this does need to get cut on the passenger side and the driver side also needs to be cut right there um, to allow for clearance of the uh, coolant lines. So I'm just going to take a sawzall, slice this off, slice it off over here, and then I'm going to start putting the bracing material up, and up along here and then start bracing it up along this side too. And, uh, and then the radiator should fit in just fine. Checkpoint. So now I have the radiator basically sitting where it needs to be, and now I understand what kind of adjustments I need to make to the system in order to get it to fit perfectly. Obviously, you'll see that I need to modify that upper hose. Lower hose doesn't look too bad, although it is a tiny bit kinked in there, but I gotta figure out how to change that one, although it's not completely hooked up, so I think it'll relieve a little bit of stress once it's hooked up. Um, it's sitting on the jack right now, so you can see right here that there is some interference. So I might just shave. So I might just shave this guy just a little bit and get this thing sitting a little bit further that way. Same thing on the other side here, you can see. So other than that, the idea now is to make the radiator mounts. So under the passenger side, we're gonna do the radiator mounts. And this is basically a rubber mount fixture. And we're gonna weld a little piece of uh, metal that's gonna end up coming up to this. So it'll end up sitting, basically hanging uh, off of the frame rails here. So it'll be a pretty easy job to get this uh, fabricated and welded up, at least tacked. That's the idea is to get it tacked up tonight. because we are going to end up using the existing N54 radiator mount brackets in a slightly different way, but we are gonna use them. So we're making the radiator bracketry. I stole this from the E92, basically didn't end up using it for exactly what it was used for anyway, but I am gonna be reusing this for a completely different purpose. 
but it will be holding the radiator in place. So, <clears throat> um, I don't want to spoil it, but I already made the other side, so I'm going to show you step by step how I made this side. Um, it is a little bit involved, but it's just a step by step, so it's not really too hard if you can just follow along. Um, it's a little bit of welding, a little bit of cutting, uh, a lot of test fitting, and some cardboard work, so um, let's take a look. Okay, so this is the passenger side. You can see that this rubber mount here kind of slips on, right? Slips into this little T-shaped thing, right? Kind of just slips in there. And then we have our frame rail here, which does need to be strengthened, but um, we need to connect A to B. This is going to help us do that. We're going to end up bending it, folding it, welding it, and then we're going to make another bracket that connects that guy to that guy. So, let's see how we do it. So first what we want to do is ultimately fit this guy inside of here. Seems like it fits pretty well. All right, pretty good. It's a little wide here for this rubber edge. So I'm going to um, just trim the inside edges first. Trim this out, this fits a lot easier in there. Okay. Now it's a matter of bending this up. Now it's time to weld. We're gonna weld this guy that's bent, we're gonna weld a little piece here, right on the end, just to support it. Tiny little bit of rework, and this is what we have. All right, so let's get this guy sitting in. Gotta be careful, it's sitting on the jack, so we have to be careful about dislodging it. And then this guy, sit right on top of there. All right, I'll try to keep the camera as still as possible. This is the mock-up that I made out of cardboard. It's basically just like a little fork at the bottom and then a fold at the top. And the fold is supposed to go up into this little notch here, and the fork is gonna end up getting welded to that. All right, so if we look up in here, that little notch is gonna end up getting welded right in there. I'm gonna get beefed up pretty good, of course, but that's the idea. So I'm gonna cut this uh, out of steel and move on from there. After the iterative process of test fitting um, and modifying, test fitting, and modifying, I came up with a bracket that looks something like this. This is a pretty thick uh, steel, I think it's like 11 gauge, or uh, maybe it's even, um, it's not an eighth, eighth inch thick, but maybe it's, maybe it's 330 seconds. But this is the bracket that's gonna end up holding the other mini bracket, the other mini bracket that I made earlier. Um, so I know it doesn't look pretty now, but when it's all installed and everything's all fabbed up and I'm going to weld everything up, I'm going to strengthen everything, but this is to position the radiator in its location. That way I can work around the radiator after everything is done. Um, and that is the thing that is set in place um, from here on out. So this will be the last piece of the puzzle to get the radiator sitting exactly where I want it to be for the rest of its life. <laughs> guys, everything is tacked. Radiator looks to be in place, although it's not resting completely on its own way yet. Would you like me to remove the jack? Let's do it together for the first time. That was just a bracket holding it in place. Well, not a bracket, it was just a spacer. Everything looks pretty good, guys. So it looks like it's sitting exactly where it's gonna be. Um, let's do a quick walk around. So 
whatever it is. Clearances look pretty good. Definitely can get a fan in there now. Cooling hose is a little long. That can be shortened easily. Other cooling hose. Looks like it'll fit. Have to work on that little kink there. But yeah, it's moving. It's teeter tottering, right? And that's okay. It's allowed to teeter totter like that because that's what the mounts on the top are for. The mounts on the top are supposed to kind of grab it and hold it from moving. So we have, so we have all dimensions. We will have all dimensions of this radiator being held in place. All right, guys, that does it for part one of two of the radiator support installation. Frame rails modified, radiator brackets installed, everything tacked. Next on part two, everything will be welded up. Frame rails, radiator bracketry, the core support will get installed and modified in order to clear the top of the radiator, make sure that the hood can install. The front bumper will be installed just to make sure that all the pieces are aligned. And then after that, we will see where we want to go next. Um, guys, if you liked the video, please like, subscribe, comment. I, I read all your comments. I even comment back on most of them. Um, so I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for tuning in. And this is Frank Macaluso from Garageaholic, signing out. Later.